One thing I realized that I don't think we've announced at all during this meeting, I just wanted to mention now because we're getting a lot, we got a lot of information yesterday, we're getting a lot more information today, and I just wanted to remind all of you that these sessions are being videotaped and they will be on the website, so you'll be able to look things up and, and review these sessions as well. I just wanted to um, highlight that. Um, so now, the third member of the panel this morning, Mohammed Khan, radiation oncologist here at Winship. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to sort of talk about uh, radiation as one of the options. Um, I think we've had some really good talks earlier uh, with Dr. Russell and Dr. Keyes talking about surgical management as well as interventional radiology. Uh, management for some uh, for liver metastases. Uh, I'll talk about radiation specifically for liver metastases, and then I'll expand the arsenal about treating even other metastases like brain metastases, bone metastases, and a wide variety of things we do. Um, so um, I have no disclosures other than I am a radio oncologist, so I'll talk about a radio oncologist perspective. Um, so things that we can help with for patients. Uh, 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 with ocular uh, melanoma, uh, as well as any other um, uh, histologies uh, that have metastases, we can offer liver uh, metastases treatment, including SBRT, which is stereotactic body radiotherapy. It's an ablative form of radiation that's very focal and centralized to where the tumor is, um, and it is uh, uh, given ablative doses to try to control the tumor, keep it from get getting larger and bigger. So it's what I would call uh, acting like a surgeon, but without the anesthesia, without the cutting, without actually inter intervening or putting anything into the body. Um, and Interim 90, I think Dr. Keyes did a great job of talking about Interim 90. We do work with interventional radiology uh, to sort of uh, help guide the radiation dose distribution, radiation dose delivery, things like that. Um, other metastases include brain metastases, spinal uh, metastases, lung metastases, bone, soft tissue, pancreatic, periodic, and many, and many other body sites that we can treat as well. Um, standard indications, I think we've talked about this earlier, oligometastatic disease is what we're focusing on. Um, those are patients that have very limited uh, burden of disease. Um, they have very good prognosis, um, and they have very good performance status. These are patients that have a long natural history. We expect them to do reasonably well. Um, therefore, intervening aggressively at a local site makes sense. You don't want that tumor to get out of control. On the flip side, you have a patient with stage four who's got widespread disease, um, with may maybe not a good prognosis, you really don't want to subject them to the toxicity of a local treatment because then a patient who may die from metastatic disease also lives with the burden of the side effects that you've given them to that local side of disease by uh, overly aggressive treatments. So that's a balance of risk versus uh, a benefit ratio that has to be balanced very carefully by your medical oncology team, uh, your surgical team, your, you know, so the whole multidisciplinary uh, process has to take place before you make a decision about what to do. Um, so things that I would consider, so if you have a patient, even in the setting of who's widespread disease, but they actually have a symptomatic lesion that's causing uh, functional problems, pain, bleeding, weakness, any of those symptoms is something that I would want to know about because I can help. I can help uh, uh, control bleeding. I can help control pain. Uh, I can help prevent functional problems. So symptomatic lesions I can treat, even if above and beyond the standard oligometastatic disease. Um, occasionally, I may select a patient that has an asymptomatic lesion. For example, uh, where you can't wait for the lesion to progress, because once you have symptoms, you wait too long. For, uh, the, the, if the lesion gets bigger and a patient actually develops symptoms, it's too late. For example, brain metastases, if you wait too long, uh, you can't wait for neurological symptoms, so we treat them electively up front. Uh, paraspinal lesions sitting around the cord, you can't wait till the patient becomes paralyzed and then treat them, so we treat them up front. Um, but these are very sort of selective patients that will do asymptomatic lesions, uh, like bone fracture, you know, airway obstruction, common bile duct obstruction, any of those areas will actually treat asymptomatic lesion, but this is a very small, narrow window of patient that we'll actually treat. So the bulk of the patient will treat with liver or other <laughs> metastases are oligometastatic disease, symptomatic lesion, this is where the common indication for radiation would be. Occasionally we'll treat an asymptomatic lesion. So these are kind of the standard uh, things we think about from a radiation oncology perspective. However, there are some newer indications that are starting to form has to do with the fact that radiation can actually be an immuno, immune enhancer, has to do with the biology of how radiation can enhance antigen presentation and perhaps 
tie in synergistically with a lot of what's going on in the medical oncology world with using immunotherapies. Uh, and then, so radiotherapy obscopal effects are starting to become talked about. And, um, there's trials that are ongoing. So let's, what is liver SBRT? Let's step back. What are the steps involved? So liver SBR, SBRT, stereotactic body radiotherapy, is basically a highly condensed form of radiotherapy to a very, very small volume of the liver uh, to provide local control of the tumor, keep the tumor from getting larger and shrink it down and perhaps get rid of it. And this is analogous to what a surgeon might do. Um, so basically, uh, it's, it's a destructive form of localized therapy without anesthesia, without cutting, without uh, significant uh, intervention. Um, liver SBRT is an effective form of uh, liver-directed uh, therapy for metastatic disease, but it's also being used to study primary liver tumors like a pedicellular carcinoma and other tumors like this. Um, one of the side effects we think about is what's called radiation-induced liver disease. That's one of the side effects. Um, and this happens when you treat a, like a, a large percentage of liver to very high doses. We know this, you know, this has been studied. Um, so we know that when we treat the whole liver to large doses, it becomes a risk. Um, uh, however, a small percentage of liver can go to very, very high doses. So you could do SBRT very safely in the liver if you're following certain guidelines uh, in terms of what doses to deliver, how much to deliver, and how much the normal liver is getting what kind of dose. So these are things that we have studied, we know, uh, so we can do it very safely and effectively. Um, and, you know, like for example, size uh, matters. If you already have liver function already, liver dysfunction, liver problems from other disease, so that could increase your risk for liver potential complications even after SBRT. Um, so what are the local controls? How effective is it? You know, and what are the side effects based on the series that have been published? So liver SBRT local controls are very, very high. 70% um, to 100%. And this is a function of obviously tumor size, tumor histology. The larger volumes, the larger tumor, larger metastases are going to be difficult to control. The smaller tumors are going to be a lot better to control um, because you can go to higher doses. The smaller the tumor is, you go to a higher dose of bladed and get very, very high local control. Larger tumors that are sitting around critical structures, you got to compromise your radiation dose a little bit, therefore your local control is going to be a little bit less. But still, 70 to 100% is considered very, very good on par with a lot of the other options that were talked about at, during the earlier talks. Um, so that's at one year and about 60 to 90% at two years. When you talk to radiation colleges, you know, they'll tell you, well, I'm gonna give all kinds of different radiation doses. There's a series that have been published. Uh, depending on size, location, intent, all those things, the radiation colleges may pick a wide variety of radiation dose options. So you may get a single fraction up to maybe even three fractions, 60 grain, 30 fractions. These are just a function of how much dose you're trying to give to that lesion and how much control do you want. And you're also trading off toxicity as well. But when you look at the outcomes, toxicity is considered very low, very acceptable. The main toxicity is what I talked about, radiation-induced liver disease. Um, if you look at the grade three or grade four toxicity, historically they range anywhere from one to 10%, but some of the modern series are showing very, very low radiation-induced liver injury of like one to 2%. So that's actually very good. So your local control at one year, maybe 70 to 100%, and your risk for significant complications down to one to 2%. So that's a pretty good uh, risk reward sort of trade-off. Um, let's look at prospective series that have been published. I can give you a whole line of retrospective series that have been published on the topic, but I think probably higher evidence are usually like phase one, phase two, and potentially phase three series. But as far as phase one, phase two series that have been published, there's a whole wide variety of those. Once again, these are small series ranging from 35 patients, 68 patients, 47. So not a large series, um, so like 61 um, uh, patients. So they're still somewhat small series, but still it gives you some guidance and some reassurance that SBRT is safe, it's effective. Um, in terms of the volume, you can see very, very small tumors to very, very large tumors have been radiated in some of these. Uh, series like a 3,000, uh, you know, th th uh, uh, you know, 30 cc volume. That's a pretty large volume. So you can see a um, wide variety of tumor volumes have been treated, uh, and a wide variety of metastases, including melanoma, have been included. Gallbladder metastases, breast metastases, colorectal metastases, lung metastases, anal clinic. So a whole wide variety of metastases have been included in this series. Radiotherapy doses that I talked about. There's a wide variety of radiation doses that have been used. Uh, so single fraction, 14 to 26 gray, uh, down to like six fraction, 60 gray and six fractions. Uh, so a whole wide variety of radiation dose regimens have been used effectively. 
and, uh, and different kind of techniques have been used, linear accelerators, cyber knife, all these different uh, technologies have been used to deliver the doses very effectively. In terms of toxicity, you can see you know, no serious toxicity report in this series. Uh, you know, one liver failure, very small amount. You know, um, this one had like 10% grade three, four acute toxicity, but no late toxicity. Um, what, once again, less than 2% late toxicity. So you can see toxicity is very acceptable. In terms of control, controls have ranged from 71%, 86%, you know, 95%. So they're, they're, they're you know, 95%. So they're considered comparable to some of the other uh, modalities that we've talked about earlier. Uh, this is just another look, another series, phase one, phase two of SPRT for liver metastases, uh, 47 patients, 63 metastases rolled. Uh, you have to have only one to three liver mats, so very select patients, uh, very limited side of metastases. Uh, your tumor could not be more than six centimeters in size. Uh, the doses were 60 gray and three fraction. These are standard doses that were initially developed in the lung experiences, the lung SPRT experiences, so we took those and applied those to liver SPRT. Uh, and then uh, one patient, so toxicity was very acceptable, uh, only 2% grade three toxicity, but if you look at the local control, the two year was 92%. This is very, very good local control. Median overall survival is very, very good, 20.5 months median overall survival. And then if you look at size, like I mentioned, the larger the size it is, your local control goes down 77%. However, if you have less than three centimeters in size, your local control is 100%. Um, this is a retrospective series of, of melanoma and renal cells, sort of combined. Uh, 17 metastatic melanoma patients, uh, 13 renal cell metastatic patients treated with SBRT, stereotactic body radiotherapy. Uh, doses 40 to 50 gray, up to 40 to 60 gray, and three to five fractions. Um, and you know, these were delivered to lung, liver, bone, uh, and then local control was 88% at 18 months, very low toxicity. And obviously higher dose per fraction was better. Obviously you give more radiation dose, you get better control. Uh, you, you know, if you give a single fraction, ablative fraction, you get a higher control. And obviously the higher radiation dose you give, the better control. So you're always compromising. You go to lower dose, you're going to compromise local control. But sometimes you need to do that because of safety and toxicity you have to take into account. Um, one of the new things that's emerging, which was one of the newer indications that I was talking about, that radiation may actually enhance your immune response. Um, and they may tie in very nicely with some of the drugs that Dr. Lawson and Dr. Yushak and the other medical colleagues may be able to offer you uh, after the therapy. Um, so here's an example of a phase one series. This is a prospective series. Once again, very, very small, only 12 patients in it. Um, they gave IL-2, so they gave radio SBRT. So they gave 60 gray in three fractions to metastases. This was a patient with widespread metastases. So this is not a patient that I typically, historically, would have offered SBRT for. Um, so the dominant area was actually in the liver. So, so this prospective study said, look, we're going to show proof of principle that radiation can enhance your immune response. It's going to tie in nicely with IL-2, uh, and then not only treat this area, but potentially get rid of all the other sides of disease. Um, so they gave SBRT like on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. They gave 60 gray, so 20 gray day one, 20 gray on, on Wednesday, 20 gray on Friday. And then they gave you IL-2 on Monday. Um, and uh, their response rate, if you look at the complete response rate or partial response rate, was 66.6%. This is a home run. I mean, this is really, really remarkable. I don't think IL-2 is supposed to give you this kind of response rate by itself. And Dr. Uh, Lawson and Dr. Yeager are also agreeing as well. There's no way IL-2 would give you this kind of response rate. So this is very, very uh, a great run. And we would like to see this at a higher level, like a phase two or phase three, and to sort of show this proof of principle. Um, so yes, radiation can help uh, cure the stage four patient, um, not only get rid of the liver, potentially help modulate your immune system in a positive way. Um, here's another example that everyone's talked about. This has kind of excited the whole radiation oncology world as well as the medical oncology world. This was uh, uh, out of the Harvard group, the uh, uh, Boston group. Um, they basically had a, a 29, 28-year-old girl uh, with a, uh, you know, uh, was on IL, was on ipilimumab and was progressing, had a hyalur uh, lesion that was progressing, a spleen lesion that was progressing, as well as a, uh, a liver lesion that was progressing. And over the course, it was progressing from 2009 to 2010, and eventually developed this sort of paraspinal uh, area that was starting to cause pain and symptoms. So here's a little paraspinal area that was starting to progress. And so basically she was having pain and symptoms. You remember one of the indications I talked about is a patient that has metastatic disease, if it causes pain or symptoms, come and see a radiation causes because we can help with that. So they decided to radiate her. They gave her SBRT ablative doses. 
uh, uh, once they gave her, shortly after that, within a few months, they saw that um, the liver lesions, the hyalur lesions, the splenic lesions actually started to resolve and sort of disappear. And she was considered sort of dis disease free or stable disease and doing very well after the radiation. So that helped sort of drive home the point that radiation can enhance the immune response, not only treat the area that's causing pain and symptoms, but potentially tie in very nicely with the immunotherapy that she was on. Um, what are the steps involved? So what does a patient need to know? You know, what do you need to know? So how do you do SBRT? What are the things you're going to be undergoing? So first step, you're going to see a radiation colleagues like me or some of my colleagues. We're going to look at your uh, pathology, look at your prognosis, look at, you know, your functional status, look at your performance status, make sure you actually are eligible for SBRT for the liver or for any other size of disease you may have. Um, once we made a decision that you are eligible for it for certain indications that I pointed out, you, we're going to sign a consent form. Once we sign the consent form, you'll go through an immobilization process where we're going to put you on a table, sort of make you steady so that you're not moving all over the table, and take into account how your organ moves during radiation and to sort of focus the beams on that. So that's going to be step one, which is immobilization. Uh, and during this, we're going to also take pictures of your tumor. So in a, in a three-dimensional space, we can see how your tumor is moving inside your body and how that's moving in relationship to other organs. Like in the liver, some of the key organs we might be worried about maybe is kind of your stomach, your lungs, uh, your, uh, your duodenum, and all these other sort of organs that are sitting. And they're all moving in sort of space, and we've got to take all that into account. So kind of like Star Wars or whatever your favorite sci-fi sci movie might be. But we have to take all this into account. Um, so your CT simulation is going to do that. There's a treatment planning session that takes place, which allows multiple beams to be sort of focused on. And then I, we can put in the radiation dose that we want to go for. Um, and then obviously treatment delivery is going to take place. And so you're going to get treatment like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for a total of maybe three to five treatments. Um, and then after your treatments, you're going to come in to see the radiation colleges periodically, every three months, every, you know, and we'll be doing some imaging and checking for toxicity, making sure it was done safely and you haven't had any complications, and then similarly looking for response. So this is what it looks like. So this is a patient laying on a table, on a CAT scan table. Uh, these are some devices to sort of make sure the patient doesn't move all over the place. There's an abdominal compression device to sort of press your diaphragm so you're breathing very shallow. So when you're breathing very, very shallow, so the liver, uh, the organ inside the liver, the tumor is not moving very much. So it's a way to keep the motion minimized to minimize the internal mo organ motion. And then we'll do a scan. So we'll do a scan of your area. So this is a patient going through the scanner. It's a wide force scanner. So a lot of patients say, hey, you know, this is like an MRI. Do I need, uh, uh, am I going to be, you know, claustrophobic? Am I going to be in a very small narrow tube? But, you know, usually patients don't have an issue with this wide pore CT scanner. And most have tolerated this very well. Um, so we'll do the scan. Um, once the scan is done, you know, we'll also t take a look at the MRI that you've had. Usually, a patient with liver metastasis would have gotten an MRI that actually better mm -hmm. delineates the tumor. Uh, uh, once the tumor is delineated, we'll take the MRI, fuse it with our CAT scan, and then we'll define the beam arrangement and the dose distribution around the tumor. So here's an example of a, the radiation dose distribution, where 100% of the dose is basically targeting the tumor, and then you've got some spillover of the dose where the radiation dose scatters. And we're making sure there's not too much dose going to the spinal cord, uh, which is one of the critical areas. Not too much is going to the lung. Not too much is going to sort of the stomach. Uh, and things like this, and trying to confirm the dose around the tumor. Um, and then once that's done, we deliver the dose. And we kind of watch you, you know, initial one month, three months, five months, nine months, 12 months, and kind of see how your tumor slowly, gradually sort of regresses over time. And you can see here, here, here and eventually disappeared. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. And then do it safely so you know you don't have any problem with the spinal cord, don't have any problem with any of the other surrounding organs. Um, now, so this was just liver SBRT. Um, now we'll talk about some other areas that I also treat and my region colleague, colleagues can help with. Here's a patient that I treated back in 2012 with a sort of metastases uh, here and here, very large metastases. Uh, and then post-radiation, pretty much gone. This is pretty much just post radiation changes at this point, and this is several years down the line. Um, and this is what the beam arrangements might look like, multiple beams sort of converging in a very, very small area where the tumors are defined. Um, here's a spinal SBRT. Um, I apologize, this isn't working. Um, the, this, the presentation, if you just click on that, it'll, it should, uh, that's all right. <laughs> but, 
the video isn't working. But uh, so basically, here's a yeah. So the video is working. This, what this is showing you. So this is the area this patient presented with a spinal metastasis, has previously uh, been treated with multiple therapies, and was having pain and symptoms around the cord. Had a little tumor sitting around the cord. So we decided to do SBRT on this gentleman. Um, try to spare the spinal cord. So you can see where the radiation dose is pretty much concentric around the vertebral body and very little dose is going around the spinal cord. Um, and what this was showing you, this video was, so this is a square block. This is what a multi, what a beam portal might look like, looks like a square. And what we want to do is just carve that out into small little shapes of what the tumor might look like. So these are little MLCs, multi-leaf collimators that move in front of the beam to sort of shape the beam. So if you have a square beam portal, and, but your tumor looks round and spherical, so what you do is you put in m multiple beams in front of it to shape it like a, uh, like a, a sphere or like a little circle or something. And then what we do is we rotate the beams around in a different direction so we get different projections of that tumor. That's the way of conforming the dose around the tumor that you're targeting while pulling the radiation dose away from surrounding organs. So that's a spinal SBRT for spinal pain, for, spinal, for someone with spinal cord compression or epidural disease. Um, this is the same thing with the lung. I treated a lung lesion that was causing pain and symptoms in oligometastatic disease. Uh, and then similarly with the soft tissue bony disease, you can kind of see these are multiple arcs that are going to rotate around the beam. And these are just different projections of the beam. These are multi-leaf collimators moving in and out through the area and then trying to send the dose and trying to spare, you know, surrounding organs and surrounding structures. So a lot of things we can offer. Once again, we can, driver, we can treat liver SBRT. Um, and some of the indications might be oligometastatic disease, so limited size of disease, limited burden of disease, good prognosis, good functional status. We can treat that with radiation as well as some of the other options we've talked about. Um, and then above and beyond that, other sites of disease, brain metastases, uh, you know, uh, spinal cord metastases, uh, any organs where you're having pain, symptoms, issues we can help with. And then the neuro indications for asymptomatic patients will be something that I think we need to have a multidisciplinary conference for in terms of using radiation as an immunotherapy modifier to enhance the immune response. But I think that's the forefront of medicine, at least in the radiation oncology world. Thank you.